So far, you have learnt about electronic properties and lattice properties. In the electronic properties, you learnt about true model. Then you learnt about Sommerfeld model. This was essentially free. Electron model in which the electrons are moving in a homogeneous potential, in a constant potential background and therefore, the solution the wave function for these was 1 over square root of v e raised to i k dot r with periodic boundary conditions over the volume v. And then you went on to learn about crystal dynamics, crystal structure and dynamics where you were told about x-ray diffraction. then crystal vibrations and their quantized form called phonons. With all these electrons and phonons, you also calculated the thermal properties, transport properties of the systems. This week, we are going to start with real crystal structure in that we want to learn what happens when we take into account the ionic potential of the background ions in a crystal. So, recall that in 1D for simplification, I have these atoms in a crystal that are connected and in the free electron model, what we did instead of these ions sitting there, we took a free constant potential of free electron moving all around. Instead, when I take the ionic background into consideration, the potential is not going to be this constant. Instead, if I plot it, it will go deep near the ions, become flatter in between and again go deep near the ions, again become flat in between, go deep and like this. So, this is the potential, let me call it V x and it repeats itself over the distance between the ions and therefore, V x plus A is equal to V x that is the potential is periodic. So, now we wish to study what happens when we have this potential in the system. So, I have to go beyond the free electron model. So, what we are really doing is we are moving towards real crystals and going beyond free electron model and see how it affects the energies, how it affects the wave function and so on. So, let us first look at physically what is going to happen. So, I have this potential, periodic potential in which these electrons are moving. I am just making this potential symbolically. Let me even make it finite well. So, this is V x, V x plus a is equal to V x. 
So, there is this translational symmetry in that if I move these potentials the whole system by A that means, if I bring this potential like this that means, I have shifted the whole thing by 1 lattice constant remember this is infinitely large this way infinitely large this way nothing really changes. You cannot distinguish between curve 1 and curve 2. So, let me show this between these two there is no distinction. If there is no distinction you are going to see the probability of finding an electron or the electron density the same as it was before you shifted the potential. What it means is that if I have particle density let us call it rho x then rho x if I shift this system rho x plus a is going to be the same as rho x is going to be the same as rho x minus a. That means, if I have shifted the coordinate system or the lattice itself by an amount a which is the lattice spacing the density does not change. That means, if I take the wave function psi x take its mod square this is same as psi x plus a mod square this is same as psi x minus a mod square it does not change. You cannot really distinguish between the two systems. What does it mean? So, when I have psi x plus a mod square I am just now taking the plus sign is equal to mod psi x whole square. It means that psi x plus a can at most differ by psi x by a phase e raised to i phi let me call it function of a because mod e raised to i phi a square is equal to 1. This is going to be the form of the wave function. Now, this is different from when I had psi x is equal to e raised to i k x which is a free electron wave function. Although in this case psi x plus a is equal to e raised to i k a e raised to i k x which is e raised to i k a psi x this is a very limited form of the wave function. This on the other hand the upper one this is more general. this admits any wave function that transforms like this and when is this possible we will look into that. Now, notice one thing we will now try to find the form for phi a psi x plus 2 a will be equal to e raised to i phi 2 a psi x. I could do this psi e raised to x plus 2 a in two steps and I could also write this as e raised to 2 i phi a psi x. You may be wondering how did I get the second step. So, let me show this on the side. I could do psi x plus 2 a is equal to psi x plus a times e raised to i phi a and this then becomes psi x e raised to 2 i phi a. So, what we have is that the form of phi is such that phi 2 a is equal to 2 phi a implies phi is linear in a and therefore, I can write phi a is equal to some k constant a. Then we conclude that psi x plus a is going to be e raised to i k a psi x. And this immediately implies that psi x is of the form e raised to i k x u k 
you may depend on k x where u k x is periodic with the same period as the lattice. And that means u k x plus a is equal to u k x and we have then concluded that the wave function psi now label it with k x is equal to e raise to i k x u k x that is the form of the wave function. Let us spend some time on this wave function. So, to recap I have this one dimensional system where the potential is periodic with period A. In that case the wave function psi x and I label it with k is of the form e raise to i k x u k x where u k x is periodic with the same period as the lattice. Notice that this property is also satisfied by the free electron wave function as we pointed out earlier because if I take free electron wave function. then psi x plus a is going to be e raise to i k a e raise to i k x which is e raise to i k a psi x and I can also write this as the form e raise to i k x u k x but in this case u k x is equal to 1 or a constant right. So, this is a very special case of the general form of the wave function that we have written earlier. So, this form is the general form of the wave function for a single particle in wave function in a periodic potential. Where the case of free electrons happens to be a very special case. So, this is known as Bloch's theorem. What does Bloch's theorem state? That in a periodic potential V x plus A equals v x the wave function is of the form psi k x where k is the label for the wave function equals e raise to i k x u k x where u k x is periodic. This is in one dimension. In three dimensions, I would have psi k will be a three dimensional vector r is equal to e raise to i k dot r u k r where u k r is periodic over a primitive cell or primitive lattice vector. So, it is periodic over primitive lattice vectors and therefore, any combination of those. So, this is the three dimensional case. I will focus in these lectures on one dimensional case to give you an idea 
what happens when you follow Bloch's theorem and what happens when you take this form of the wave function and how the properties of electrons or a particle in a lattice change.